Good evening, Sarah the Real Simple Mama here. And tonight is the night, sorry, that we are going to not break out into song. We are going to let my little Easter egg girls come in with the flock. Right now, believe it or not, it's about 7.15 at night. And it'll be dark here in about another 30 minutes. So the chickens are not going to bed yet, but they're, you know, they're winding down. The temperature has dropped. It's like barely 70 degrees here. Like we are not ready for it. It's the first day of fall and it really feels like it here in South Texas. While I'm kind of waiting a minute, I wanted to give you an update on what I've been doing. So the grazing box is officially done, except for me clipping those zip ties. So there's a separate video coming up and there'll be a how-to article on realsimplemama.com. But um, just so you can see how that's all gone down, but that's officially ready to go. Now we're just gonna wait for the wheatgrass to germinate, which should be within five to seven days. That's just sticks that I'm getting out of here and trash from the dirt and stuff like that. Um, I have been, um, if you've watched my other videos that I've been uploading, I know I uploaded two back to back the other day, but one of them was about uh, basically help. I need ideas on plants. And so today I spent God, probably two or three hours out here just cleaning up everything, planting that and getting that prepped. And then these pots here are like an experiment. So I had all of my herbs and vegetables and stuff like that in pots because we did, we haven't planted anything in the ground here yet. We didn't know where we wanted a garden box and et cetera, et cetera. So my garden is basically, you know, just a plethora of pots as it were. And I was wondering because um, even on the Backyard Chicken Forum, um, the local Facebook group of mine, as well as on that garden video that I did, some people said, oh, the chickens will eat this and this and this and this. And other people said, well, no, they don't. And so I was like, you know what? A lot of those herbs that we're talking about, I'm growing. So we've got lavender, rosemary, sage, and lemongrass. Um, I did not bring, I don't know why, I didn't bring my peppermint down over here. And then this was green beans. And I, I put them all out and like purposely stuck them through the fence. And it's been here all afternoon to see what will my chickens eat. Now, of course, from this perspective, from this angle, they wouldn't be able to completely kill the whole plant, but it would be really obvious to me if a whole section has been eaten off or pulled away that, oh, okay, they were eating that. They didn't eat any of the herbs, guys, look. Like they didn't touch the lavender or the rosemary, which this thing is like unkillable, man. Like it's gone through two, at least two freezes. Like it's awesome. Lavender, at least in my case, is pretty, pretty weak. Like I have to baby it a little bit when it freezes, but this rosemary is amazing. This sage, those were seedlings this year, but I mean, my, look at this. Like I, I've pruned it twice in the last month and they're just like going crazy. And same thing with the lemongrass. My father-in-law brought us like a sprig from Dallas when he drove down to visit and we just stuck it in a pot and we're like, well, you know, if it dies, you know, whatever, we didn't pay anything for it. And look at this thing. I've pruned this twice in the last month also. And then my sad little green beans. So they ate the green bean leaves. Like, you know, they did that like, oh, oh, that was amazing, yay. So they ate that, but look at this. So now I'm wondering, you know, I could plant this stuff in the ground. Um, I probably wouldn't put these pots in there because I bet they would dig up the pots, not for the plant itself, but just being in the dirt or laying eggs in it or whatever their weird little brains tell them to do. Now look, see, it's starting to get dark. Um, here from from my perspective actually it looks a lot darker than it does on my phone I don't know if it's just the angle I'm holding it at or whatever so here's the magic moment when we're gonna let these girls out for the first time and hopefully everybody's just gonna go on to bed and there's not gonna be any big problems when I've integrated I've integrated chickens one once before um, if and I apologize for not being clear on this um, the original chickens that we had I originally had six chicks but that was when I just had my website that was just parenting stuff and I wasn't really planning on writing or videoing, recording anything about chickens. So I don't have a lot of videos of them. It's mostly just random little montages from my, my just from my personal videos. But I've integrated hens once before and it was Gracie and Lacey whose fluff butt is in there. And if I remember correctly, like I literally picked them up and put them into the coop one night after my other girls were already up there in bed um, to where it was kind of like, oh, what is somebody here? Oh, I don't know. Because chickens get kind of into a stupor when, when they're really, really sleepy when it's dark. When it's dark and they're in their coop and in their roost for the night, that's also the best time for you to do like a physical check. Like, ooh, ooh, see that? It was Callie Bird. She's like, hey, hey. Um, you know, to check their feet. Um, to do any kind of, you know, medical check, things like that. You could do it when they're sleepy. And if you have to pick them up, pick them up. Or if you have to, like, you know, check a wing or, or whatever, do it when they're sleepy. 
So I'm gonna let these girls out. If I'd had more people here, I would have taken a video of us because we did clip these, the wings of these girls. Um, if you haven't followed, these are two Easter eggers on the new girls and they're beautiful. Um, they're either finishing a molt or they were also kind of beaten up by a rooster because they're missing some feathers on their back, but it's not that bad. And I'm not sure what I want to name them yet. Um, we're not sure if they're sisters, but they're definitely the same age and they're probably related in some way. I just don't know. Um, you know where they came from how many different Easter egg or families they had if that makes sense But see you could see she's got a little bald spot there on her back But they're beautiful. They've been laying a little bit. I know they've been pretty traumatized So their laying has slowed down a little bit, but that's okay. Um, they do have beards They do have a little bit of a floppy comb, but they're both Easter eggers And so I don't know if I'm gonna name them Flopsy and Mopsy or like Rosie and Posy or mm-hmm Daisy and Maisie like I want some like dorky cutesy name like that so tell me in the comments what you're thinking um, but we had to clip their wings earlier and it was it was just a disaster um, I saw when I because with these girls I'm not trying to grab them like with their wings close together like you know like you're picking them up like this I'm having to grab them by their both of their feet together and hold them upside down and it makes them kind of go catatonic and they're like Whoa. and then they get still um, but it was for my husband and I to try to get them in there because they're just so scared of people um, it was an experience for sure. Um, one of them, I confirmed the calmer of the two, I confirmed that she does have a small little bumblefoot spot on one of her feet, which if you know me and you know like when my chickens were just little babies, I was like, you know, I want to read about every disease and all of this stuff. Um, I ended up not, you know, buying vaccines for my chickens or anything crazy like that, but it's like, you know, I wanted to start researching and looking and when I started Googling about bumblefoot and what it is and, um, you know, what you have to do to treat it, I just became terrified and so I, I've, I've just been like oh god oh god please don't have bumblefoot and of course one of them does so the problem is, is that they're so wild um, for me to try to treat her it's gonna be really difficult the other one the one who's really really scared um, the one who's up roosting right now she's the one who's just like she completely flips out we did get their wings clipped and I apologize we weren't able to do a video because it was just too difficult with these birds um, but I want to make sure that she didn't hurt her leg because she just completely panicked and one of her legs got free So I was holding her by one and she was trying to escape by the other um, You know and I have videos about predators and things like that just of things to watch out for but remember that chickens will often hide their injuries <laughs> What? They'll hide their injuries or they'll hide their illness because they don't want to look weak either to a predator or to the rest of their flock Because sometimes a weak bird will get picked on Even just among hens even if there's no males around so I've, I've been just worried sick about them all evening. Like, oh God, how am I gonna treat Bumblefoot on this one? And, and I hope the other one didn't hurt her, her hip or her leg or anything like that. Um, normal treatment for Bumblefoot, you can do, you know, the, the least invasive is take the bird in and soak their foot in, you know, Epsom salt, like an Epsom salt bath. Um, and Bumblefoot, without going into a lot of detail, is, is where they've gotten a cut on their foot and then it's gotten infected, you know, because, I mean, they're, they're walking around in dirt and in their poop and stuff like that, especially these poor girls with all the rain we've had and they're just in the cage. Um, so, and then you have to basically squeeze all of the gunk out and then wrap their foot. And you can use Neosporin and, and things like that on them. But, so if it was one of these birds, oh, look, getting ready for bed. Look at that gracie bird. She's really warmed up lately. Like, she comes and eats out of my hand and stuff. She's awesome. But, normally, I don't think it would be that big of a deal. And it's a very small little spot on her foot. It was not hard. Um, and it was not hot to the touch. So, that's all good signs as far as infection or not. So, I'm sure she's just gotten it in the last day or two. I'm just kind of like, crap, how am I going to do that? So, here's what we're going to do. These girls are just hanging out. They're getting ready to go to bed. Callie is my alpha, so she's going to kind of be watching. I bet these other two will go up first and she goes up last just to kind of do a final look and make sure all is clear before they go up. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open this door and I'm going to come and sit back over here. Again, this is only my second integration ever and I have never, um, you know, been able to sit out here and watch because last time I did it after dark. And I apologize that, you know, the camera kind of went off there for a second. Now their wings have been clipped so they can't fly away and if they haven't figured it out here in the next couple of minutes um, I don't really want to scare them up into bed but now everybody is sleepy so hopefully there won't be a lot of fights here we go here we go and I 
I know it's getting dark. I don't, I don't want to turn on any lights or anything because this to me is just fascinating. Now the one who's down on the ground, this one is the one who's a little bit more tame. She seems a little bit more calm. Here they come, here they come. So this is their first time getting to explore in a week, almost, almost exactly a week. But as it's getting dark, they're gonna look for shelter pretty soon. And I'll come back out to lock them up in a little while and make sure that they made it up. But that feels so good. <laughs> ah. My other girls are like, hmm? Interestingly, it looks like Callie already went up. So, I mean, there's just all kinds of fascinating, like, evolutionary stuff, you know, about the alpha and the different roles in the pack or in the flock and, you know, thinking about, about predators and all kinds of stuff. Ooh, they're out. Now, I do have a separate video about quarantining your birds, and I am going to write an article on realsimplemama.com. Um, oh, look, they just walked by each other without a problem. Cool. This is so beautiful. It makes me so happy. Because I want all of my animals to be happy. I want them to be loved and spoiled. Um, especially for these two new girls. They've been so wild. They've been kind of just not left to fend for themselves because that sounds irresponsible. But, um, you know, they've had five acres to roam on with tons and tons of birds. Um, tons of roosters. Yeah, you can't fly there. Surprise, surprise. Oh man, don't you escape. She's the smarter of the two. She's the calmer of the two. This one down here with the really floppy comb is the one who just panics. I don't expect them to come over by me, but maybe I just need to back up a little bit. But, you know, this is a completely different world for them. Now they're fenced in. They're in a much smaller space. But there's also no roosters. There's not a lot of competition, so a completely different environment. Well, let's hoping that our wing clipping did the job. I believe my husband clipped left wing for both of them. try to do a chicken wing clipping video the next time my girls molt and I need to do it again. You don't have to clip their wings until their feathers fall out and they get new feathers. Feathers are not like fingernails. They don't continuously grow. A feather is a feather and it will be the same until it falls out. So none of my birds now need to be clipped until they molt. Oh, oh, oh. And as much as that hurts my heart, that's normal. It's going to happen for a day or two. Can't do anything about it. But next time I have to clip wings, I'll try to show you. Um, we only clip one wing on our birds because, as you could see, that made them lopsided enough that they weren't able to get any distance. Now, what's interesting, too, I don't know how well these birds knew each other, but Lacey and Gracie and these two Easter Eggers are from the same owner. So, I don't know how well they knew each other. Maybe they remember each other. They, again, they were on about five acres, so maybe they never really interacted, but I was kind of wondering if there would be some familiarity there. I guess not. Oh, sorry, baby. Now one of them's already in. Now you noticed, chickens want to get up off the ground as it gets dark. The question is, are they going to try to roost like over there on that pallet, or are they going to know to go inside? Their main instinct is to get up off the ground, and that could be in a bush, that could be in a low tree. That's their main thing, and of course if they can fly, then they can get up higher. But I'm sure her instinct is telling her, hey, it's almost dark, I gotta, I gotta get off the ground. So hopefully she's going to come over here. But these Easter Eggers, if you haven't looked up photos, I know I haven't gotten really good photos because they've been in a cage and of course now they're scared. And I'm trying to, um, you know, minimize the amount of stress that I'm giving them. But 
They have muffs or beards, which is just short gray feathers under their chin that look like they have a beard. They're just beautiful. And different breeds, remember there's hundreds of breeds of chickens. Ooh, ooh, ooh. And Cali grabber too. There's hundreds of breeds of chickens and they have different things going on. It's okay, it's okay. As much as that hurts my heart, and I think I said this already, I have to let them do pecking order. Like it's gonna happen, you know, if I stop it today and tomorrow, then it'll happen on Monday. Look at her. Okay, thank God she can't get up there. I gotta break this cage down too. So what I'm gonna do, I don't wanna walk over there, but what I need to do is drag the cage away from the fence and from this coop so that there's a greater distance that she cannot jump. Cause I know, I know what she's doing. She's thinking about getting back on this and hopping from here to here. In fact, I may have just given her the idea by telling her that. Sometimes chickens amaze you by how stupid they can be. And other times they amaze you by how intelligent they can be. Now that's the new girl. She's on the outdoor roost of this coop. Honestly, for tonight, that's totally fine. Because she, I can lock her up and she'll be safe. And then tomorrow, I'm going to get rid of that cage. All those plastic bags and all that junk in there, I'm just going to roll up and throw it out. I'm not going to try to reuse them. Remember, you can reuse plastic bags for anything from hurricane protection to protection from the cold or the north wind or whatever. Just don't use any bags that were for fertilizer or anything that's not safe for your birds. There we go. What are you guys all coming out? My little raptors. Hey, Gracie, look at her. Hey. Gracie now is very much like, hey, when I see you, you're supposed to give me something. But I love it because she was really scared of me for a couple of weeks when I got her. And now she's she's just chill. Good girls. And I come out and talk to them multiple times a day. So they know my voice, they know my kids, they know my dogs. Their life is very, very, very routine, except for this disruption, of course. So this is really fun. I'm glad that I'm documenting this, even just for me just to watch chicken behavior. And there goes Lacey. Lacey's like, y'all got your food? It's a little butt right here. She's such a brat. She reminds me so much of Dottie. If you guys have been following me for a while, my original Wyandotte, Dottie Bird, because she is a Wyandotte is the name of that breed. And they are silver laced or red laced and they are just gorgeous because with the way that their feathers are two-toned, they look like they are lacy. Which is why this one's name is Lacey. But I mean, it's so funny that both of these girls, the one that, I, that passed away and this one, they have the same voice, they act the same, like it's so funny. How different breeds, you know, there are commonalities. And I really hope that these new Easter Eggers are happy. You know, I don't ever want them to have a life where they're stressed out or they're going to be afraid forever. Um, obviously this has been a big week for them, a big transition. I know their egg laying has slowed down. Um, I've got to deal with the bumblefoot issue on this one. And um, you know, hopefully not a leg injury with the other one. See, I just got to watch her when she's sleeping and see what she does. Like right when I let him out in the morning, um, I'm going to look up like how to do some chicken joint checks, like to check for her hip and stuff like that. But I bet in the next couple minutes, Callie is going to start shooing him in. Like, All right, everybody get your asses in there. I'm going to take attendance. Right? Like when you go camping and you do the head count in bed. I've been a chaperone. I know what's up. The other thing you got to remember as far as quarantine is the new birds were used to having food and water in, you know, situation A. You got to make sure they learn where it's, it's going to be. Now, honestly, if they're in close enough quarters, they could kind of see the other chickens and they'll figure it out by following the other birds. Um, but like what I'm going to do, and I apologize, I know it's dark. There's a black dog bowl in there, a black ceramic dog bowl. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it right next to their actual water and leave it there for a day or two so because that's the symbol that they've been looking for that means water right so then i'll put it next to the new one and then i'll phase the old one out the green food i'm not worried about that i'm just going to get rid of those two clip-on things because the big feeder in there should be pretty obvious but just to try to help their transition a little bit coming up in the next couple of months now that i have five birds in this coop and this coop at the innovation pet i love it but they advertise that it's for six to eight birds which is a lie um, you know, five is the max that I'm going to try. Um, as far as roosts that are in there, it's uh, two, like two and a half foot 
roost and the shape isn't that great and they're not higher than the nesting boxes and basically like I know in um, in practice like it's all wrong <laughs> so I'm gonna try to uh, use some of this brush or maybe buy something and uh, make some better roosts for them in the next couple months there they go everybody's going to bed well there's a line now who's holding up the line okay so I'm gonna go ahead and close this because I know it's really dark and you're probably not even watching anymore anyway because you're like why are you still talking lady but I like to think I have my own nature show or something so I got to get that cage um, probably just drag it out tonight I try to get this other girl to bed lock him up for the night there is gonna be some pecking order stuff which hurts my heart but I know it's normal <laughs> they're communicating I need my little raptor call but I'll do another video in the next couple of days just for update on the newbies on how they're doing unfortunately I'm probably gonna have to do some bumblefoot stuff too which scares the hell out of me guys like I don't want to do that oh god oh baby I'm sorry I'm sorry Oh, you know what? I apologize. This is the more scared one. The more intelligent, calm one. She's the one that's been inside the whole time. It's dark. I don't know what I'm doing. All right, I'm going to shut this off. I'm Sarah, the Real Simple Mama. Let me know how you're doing. Name suggestions for these birds. I got to get this girl to bed. Good night, guys. <laughs>